It is Monday, July 26th, and Bitcoin is on the move. We had a big, big weekend for Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and dig into it and see what's going on and try to get an idea. Uh, what was interesting in the last video, I said two things. Number one, keep an eye on Sunday, especially Sunday afternoon, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, somewhere around there to watch for moves. The other thing that um, I talked about was to start watching uh, the cryptocurrency market in general and how these altcoins are up and down. As you can see today, everything is in the green. We have AMP up almost 50%. Anchor is up 30%. Uh, BitTorrent, ThorChain, VeChain in the 20s. Matic is back up again after taking a beating at 20%. Matic is at $1.08. It was all the way down to $0.60 cents, uh, last Friday, I believe it was. Um, so the key is to watch these altcoins. Uh, one day, there's a lot of them that are way up. The next day, a lot of them are way down. And you want to start tracking those, kind of keep an eye on it to spot patterns. But here's the interesting thing uh, that I pointed out as well uh, about what is going on is here's the Bitcoin chart. Uh, and let's go ahead and there's the daily chart. Here's Ether. Looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Bitcoin. Ether. Here's something that's really interesting. Take a look at the oil chart. Look what oil did. Same thing. Uh, you see on the, I guess on the daily, that's the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, 24th. Oil's been shooting straight up, right tracking right along with Bitcoin. And then of course, we talked about the S&P. Uh, we talked about NASDAQ and we talked about the Dow Jones. They're all starting to take, you know, tail off a little bit today. Uh, we have a lot of big news coming up this week that we're going to talk about here in a second. But back to Bitcoin, and let's get on the hourly, and let's look at this move um, that happened yesterday. We got a little bit of bouncing around going on right now, but we've had quite a little run here with Bitcoin and Ether. And you can see that the charts are looking almost identical on the hourly. Um, right here after this big move. And it was basically yesterday around, yep, starting right around that six o'clock time frame, five, six o'clock, it started moving up. And then we had our big jumps around seven, eight o'clock. Same thing with Bitcoin. And it all started right over here with this little area uh, a couple of days ago on the 20th and 21st, we had that little drop uh, that's when we were hovering around 29,000, danced around a little bit, then it started the journey up, a little bit of, uh, little bit of upward momentum, and it's just been inching its way up over the last uh, couple of days over the weekend. And what's interesting is what's going on right now, very sidewaysy, very wicky. And if we look at our daily and go back to the daily again, you can see, again, the market overall is still in a downtrend. We did close a little bit higher yesterday, but it's still just a lower high. We haven't crossed back above 35,000 for a close yet. So we have to get above that. And then ultimately you got to get back above 40,000 because remember starting you know, a few weeks back, um, I was talking about this liquidity zone between 30 and 40,000 that we could spend a lot of time in that 30, 40,000. And how does a negotiation work? They get your hopes up and they get your hopes down. And right over here, we were dancing around between 30 four and 39,000 in that range. And as we get closer to 40, everybody gets really excited. The market gets really excited. Everybody's looking for new all-time highs. And then as you get down into the 29 to 32,000 range, everybody's talking about selling off and hitting the bottom and reaching all-time lows. And the truth is nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen and when. But the interesting thing is with these moves like this that we saw over the last few days on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 20, um, 26th, 25th, 20, you know, so from the 21st through the 26th over the last week, we've seen just steady upward action. You've seen the exact same action in the ether chart. You've seen, uh, let's take a look at Apple, seen this exact same action in Apple and the exact same action in the stock market. Um, everything has been straight up. And then let's go pick some random altcoins. So let's just go through here and let's take a look at uh, Chainlink. Let's just pick Chainlink here. I'm just randomly picking Chainlink. 
and let's um, we'll put Chainlink on the chart here and let's look at what happened to Chainlink here over the last week. And you'll see that same exact price action over the last week. Um, so this is not random. This is definitely technical um, trading done uh, through automation based on a lot of different things. So we did have the B Word conference last week that uh, pumped a lot of excitement into the space. So um, that was prime for a big pump. We also had news about Amazon hiring people for their uh, blockchain cryptocurrency division so they can start accepting payments and using cryptocurrency. So a lot of good momentum, a lot of good news to build this drive on and create some liquidity in this zone and basically create a short squeeze. So stopping uh, all of the shorts out, everybody was going short down at this point. Uh, on the 20th, everybody was calling for more downside. So there was a lot of shorts put into place. So this big move here, especially these giant spikes, were just liquidating a lot of those shorts. So now what's everybody doing? Now everybody's going long, looking for new all-time highs. So the next logical move would be another down, liquidating all these longs. And we could play around in this zone. Like I said before, you know, about a month or so ago when we were operating in this um, 33 to 40,000 range, there's a lot of liquidity, a lot of price action, and a lot of emotional turmoil that Bitcoin can play on the market and play on people through that zone. So that's the liquidity zone right there that we're ranging in um, that we could potentially be stuck in here for a little bit more time. So keep an eye on that price action across different altcoins between Bitcoin, Ethereum, different altcoins in the markets. You can definitely see that this is a broad scale market liquidity event, a lot of um, automated trading going on uh, across all different markets, across a bunch of different altcoins. I mean, probably 10, 15 different altcoins that you can see the exact same price action in the exact same times doing the exact same things. So this is definitely automated trading um, that's set up uh, that um, a lot of the institutional investors are using, professional traders are using, um, algorithmic trading, things like that across different exchanges and across different coins. So it's definitely something that um, is automated, orchestrated um, in terms of creating liquidity. So what, what do we watch for in this week ahead? We have the Federal Reserve meeting coming up. Uh, we also have big earnings week as we get into this week and the end of the month. And uh, we get set for the um, final quarter of the year going into the fourth quarter. Um, so you want to keep an eye on all of those earnings reports as we get set for the end of the third quarter going into Q4. Um, and the Fed meeting, are they going to talk about tapering uh, the asset purchase, bond purchase program? Are they going to talk about interest rates, things like that? So the markets are kind of bouncing around in advance uh, of those meetings, trying to anticipate what the Fed's gonna do. And the Fed may very well do absolutely nothing again um, and send a, a signal that they're not willing to do anything. We still have the Delta variant creating uncertainty, things like that. So a lot of news to watch out for this week uh, in the next couple of weeks. And as we get towards the end of this quarter into the final quarter of the year. Um, so a lot to be ready for. Uh, Bitcoin could potentially continue moving sideways, ranging in that thirty to forty thousand dollar range for a while. We could see another spike through the upside, but we got to get over that forty thousand before you can anticipate any kind of real upside. And as long as you're not closing below thirty thousand and holding that consistently, then uh, not a lot of potential for a whole lot of downside. Although anything could happen. You could shoot straight up. You could shoot straight down. That was a pretty quick move that we saw, um, stopping out all those shorts and liquidating all the shorts here over the weekend. Uh, but that Sunday price action is something to keep an eye on, um, as we talked about last week. So uh, I will keep you updated and see you on the next video.